Please be still. Calm this soul. I need you here now. Restore my hope. I confess I've been afraid. Remind my heart, Lord. Increase my faith. So I will run into the waves as courage comes to take this place with perfect love, perfect love. Oh, what can take away my hallelujah? No darkness can contain my And who can stand against your might with armies of angels by my side? I will run into the waves as courage comes to take this place with perfect love. away my hallelujah no darkness can contain my hallelujah your cross has made a way for my My hallelujah, shadows will fade, darkness will break. I keep on seeing your praise. Nothing can take my hallelujah, nothing can take my hallelujah. Shadows will fade, darkness will break. I keep on seeing your praise. Nothing can take my hallelujah, nothing can take my hallelujah. Shadows will fade, darkness will break. I'll keep on singing your praise. Oh, what can take away my hallelujah? No darkness can contain my hallelujah. Your cross has made a way for my hallelujah. Good morning and welcome to our Living Word Home Church service. I hope you're doing well. I'm Pastor Benny and if you're joining us for the first time, thank you for being a part of this time as we learn and grow in God's Word together. Amen. Well, God is good, folks. We've been doing a series on, again, uh, been there, done that. You know, I hope you've been enjoying it so far. Uh, we look forward to doing this, ser this sermon series uh, based on our theme, when our hurts keep hurting. But before we get started, let's just bow our heads and enter the Lord's presence. Amen. Father, we just so thankful this day for the work you're doing. We thank you that you promised your word would not be returned void. So we ask you to search our heart, mind, soul, and spirit and empower us with your divine wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. We thank you for this victory in the mighty name of Jesus and all the saints said, amen and amen. Well, when our hurts keep hurting. That's right. 
when we're talking about those hurts that come from our past. You know, I, I find a lot of the time that my battles come from my, again, my past hurts. You know, I'm talking about the kind of hurts that causes us to lose ourselves. That's right, those hurts that uh, cause us to sort of do the unthinkable and not in a, in a positive way, though, to become something that we're not meant to be. You know, I'm talking about being a, becoming a victim. And today's message, folks, is not going to be something easy to hear. Uh, so prepare yourself. Can, it is, can be a bit sensitive and or insensitive to some, depending on who's actually um, uh, hearing, the, hearing this message. So I just want you to prepare yourself, pray. Um, I'm going to be kind of talking about the abuses today, of sexual abuse and things like that that are not very pleasant to hear. And I personally was abused uh, when I was four years old. And what can someone do at that early age, right? You know, not, not to mention the suffering, the constant verbal abuse. I mean, I'm talking about growing up. That's all I heard. Living with the shame, guilt, humiliation, and fear every day. Most folks uh, who experience abuse guard themselves by putting up walls, trying not to feel anything, and end up developing all kinds of trust issues. Blaming God and everyone for everything. Pretty much becoming victimized. You're going to hear me saying that quite a bit today. And then hurting others while feeling justified in the process. And the worst part of it, think about this a minute, is that we may not even be aware that we're doing all of this. You know, I acknowledge and recognize this more and more every time I play basketball. I'm referring to my competitive nature, of course. You know, it comes from my pride. It's a pride issue. And it's what I use to guard myself, to protect myself. You know, I've always the, I was needing to, to win, to not feel weak, to sort of, you know, make sure that, you know, no one's taking advantage of me. So I had to try to be the best. I had to try to take no prisoners, so to speak. Of course, I don't play to hurt anyone, but like I said, not intentionally. We can hurt others and not realize that. I mean, think about that a minute. That's because we can be so caught up, so self-centered, and caught up in the moment, caught up in, a, in our own little world, it, that it becomes all about me. It becomes all about us. Nothing else matters. It's dysfunctional. Dysfunctional behavior, folks. When we are causing ourselves and others physical and emotional hurt, it's abuse. Folks, abuse or abuses tend to leave a void. That's right, in us. A void in which you can spend a lifetime trying to, you know, fill it. Fill it with something. Creating or developing dysfunctional identity. That's what it happens. That's what happens. We create these images in our lives, which in times, again, become acceptable and normal behavior. Maybe you grew up in an alcoholic home, right? Or in a drug-infested home. And truthfully, it just became normal, a way of life. Maybe you were exposed to abuses that were unreported, unrecognized, unresolved. Listen, folks, listen to these statistics. I want to be real today and because we're going to need to understand what we need to do as we move forward and experience God's power. Amen. But one statistic tells us that one in, in three women and one in four men in the U.S. have experienced rape, violence and or stalking. Imagine that. Over one in three women and one in four men in the U.S. have experienced rape, violence. That's almost 50% of adults in the U.S. have experienced psychological aggression. 
One in three girls and one in five boys are, are sexually assaulted by the age of 18. I mean, reading these statistics were like, you know, I knew these for years, but it hasn't changed. These are facts, folks. This is a serious issue. If you are a victim of abuse, I'm sorry for your pain, I empathize, but I've been there. But when your past hurts, still hurts, it just means that it's time to get proper help. They would eventually hurt others. And you can't hide behind God with this. You can't use God as a drug to hide this, folks. Jesus endured the pain and challenges of abuse. He experienced the physical, emotional, and psychological abuse. And not to mention the horror. Think about this, the horror of torture. I want you to turn your Bibles to the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verse 27, the NIV version. And this is probably really short here. It's going to say, they stripped him and put him in scarlet robe and put a scarlet robe on him. Is that it? You say? No. He suffered far more than that. They stripped him naked, yes, and they did so much more. But much too often, people don't see, believe, or even consider certain things as abuse. They often minimize the abuse and even blame the victim as if it's their fault, justifying it by saying they had it coming. There may be a lot of other ways we go about not acknowledging these kind of abuses. But then you also have those who see abuse as only physical. Folks, in this, uh, in case you uh, are not sure of what abuse is, I want to I wanna go through a few so you can actually uh, get an idea. Let's start with physical abuse. It's hitting, pushing, choking, kicking, biting, etc. You know, that's pretty simple, right? Then we got sexual abuse. It's uh, any unwanted sexual behavior imposed without consent. Rape, for example. That includes date rape, rape in marriage. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, sexual assault, inappropriate touching, sex comments, harassment at work or anywhere else for that matter. Right? And what about emotional abuse? It's verbal abuse, name calling, controlling behavior, constant criticizing, isolating, shaming, gaslighting, blaming, and or, and or threatening abuses. These leave divorce, suicide, hurt families, folks. Last but not least, spiritual abuse. It's, a, it's almost when we weaponize the Bible. That's right. When we use the Bible as a weapon using spiritual authority to control, manipulate, shame, threaten spiritual consequences, to force those into submission. That's spiritual abuse, folks. Now, the church has a responsibility not to see abuse as their problem or not my problem when they say that. And when they say this, when they say that this problem is, a just, is for the justice system, or that is, it, it is for the courts to handle, that, that could be negligence on our part. That's right. And here's an ouch moment. Not all abuse is criminal, but all abuse is sinful. So how do we, as believers, address abuse? For one, and although not easy, but with God's help, of course, and God, godly counsel, we can actually do something about it. As the church, wherever we go, folks, our responsibility is to create a safe community. If you're not sure if you, yourself, have been a victim of abuse, ask yourself. 
are your emotions and behaviors helping or hurting you? If you are having trouble with self-acceptance, risk-taking, high frustration, tolerance, self-responsibility, self-direction, acceptance of uncertainty, and in or trouble with commitment, being passive-aggressive, being a caretaker. I mean, the list can go on, but chances are we've been abused. No judgment here, folks. And here's another ouch moment. I'm going to be full of them today. Abusing never makes you strong. It only shows you're weak. A lot of times we don't see that we're abusing anyone. I didn't, couldn't acknowledge that even when I played basketball. But before we begin the journey of healing, we have to start by acknowledging and address those we are abusing. If we are misusing our power and authority to hurt others, folks, you know the saying, hurt people, hurt others, right? If you are abusing, chances are you've been abused. Listen to what Paul says in the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 12, verse 10b. It's the second part of that verse, and it's on NIV, which I'm using. He says, for when I am weak, then I am strong. Right? Paul is saying that not only does our acknowledgement of our weaknesses help us develop Christian character, it also deepens our relationship and worship with the Lord. Because in admitting our weakness, by doing that, we affirm God's strength. You see? We rely and trust in God to help us. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10. I'm going to do the whole verse this time in the NIV. It says, that is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardship, in persecution, in difficulty. For when I am weak, then I am strong. See? It's saying God's power works best in our weaknesses. Why would we need it when we feel strong? Jesus tells us that when we accept him as our Lord and Savior, we become a new creation in Christ. Lauren said last week, he, lived, he lives in us. It's time to stop, folks. Stop making excuses. Not to face it. Not to deal with these things. Our hurts will hurt others, guaranteed. Those suffering abuse are currently in danger. When our hurt keeps hurting, it's a red flag telling us, stop, get to a safe place, and reach out for help. Then we can get ready to heal and to get healthy. Now here's a major ouch moment. You can't heal and hate at the same time. So how do we get started? Well, that's going to be interesting, right? We need, to look to, we need to look to Jesus. Say it. We need to look to Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, right? He suffered some horrific abuse. But Jesus prayed for those who abused him. That's what he did. Not easy to do if you're angry, feeling hurt, and being victimized to keep from hurting others or allowing them to keep hurting us. Stop them from keep allowing, we can stop them from allowing them to keep hurting you. That's right. Think about this. While Jesus was hanging on that cross, suffering abuse, this is what he did. I want you to turn your Bible to the book of Luke, chapter 30, 23, chapter 23, verse 34a, the NLT version. Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they... Do not, they don't know what they are doing. He's saying this as the abuse is taking place, hanging there on the cross. Folks, it took a long time for me to forgive. For one, I didn't even know I was angry or resentful or holding on to unforgiveness. I was just looking for a way to survive. 
to find myself. Now, we might discuss this on a Q&A question because this is a side note. How can you find yourself if you don't know you're even lost? We'll discuss that on our Q&A following the message. The next time you are in a crowd, I want you to try this. Look, I want you to look around and uh, see, look at the crowd. Take a minute and imagine how many of those folks are lost, might be lost. Don't have a clue that they're going through any type of abuse. Remember, forgiveness isn't letting your offender off the hook. I'm going to say that again. Forgiveness isn't letting your offender off the hook. It's giving it to God and trusting him that he will do what is right. God's word says he works all things for the good of those who love him and trust him. Even what the enemy intends to for evil, God is already working it out for our good. Our prayers may not change others, but it will always change us. That's right. I know we wanted to change people immediately, but people have their own free will, right? Looking back at all the dumb things I have done and hurt other and hurting others. I know for a fact, just knowing that I've been forgiven led me to Ephesians chapter 4. I want you to turn to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31, 32, the NLT version. This is what Paul says. He says, get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. Folks, we need to accept that. And to accept that, we need to let go of others. Now, here's a, another Q&A question that, that we might be discussing after the sermon. He says, when you forgive, does that mean things go back to normal? Was, that's if it, that was normal and healthy back then, right? Before you got to the place. But the goal, here's the goal. The goal is... Or something different and better, right? Well, hopefully not the same. Remember, forgiveness frees us from hatred, bitterness, anger, and the pain and suffering. But it might not free us from the need to establish boundaries. I want you to keep that in mind. After Jesus' resurrection, he was still, he, he still has scars. That's right. I'm sure we all have scars from what we've been through and what's, been, what's happened to us. Healing is possible, folks. We might have scars, but redemption is real. That's right. Testimonies are real. Testimonies of forgiveness, uh, testimonies of rest restoration, of redemption are real. A testimony is a demonstration of God's power in the meantime, folks. In the meantime, we might have to take a step, uh, take steps to help protect ourselves, right? That's where the boundaries come in. While we heal. See? Like setting boundaries, disciplining ourselves. But by His power, we can all receive healing. Jesus made that, made sure of that. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 4 and 5, the Amplified Version. But in fact, he has bored our grief and he has carried our sorrows and pains. Yet we ignorantly assume or assume that he was stricken, struck down by God and degraded and humiliated by him. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was crushed for our weaknesses, our sin, our, uh, our injustice, our wrongdoing. The punishment required for well-being fell on him. And by his stripes, his wounds, we are healed. 
Maybe you've been following Jesus uh, and these hurts keep coming up. They keep surfacing. And for everyone, it's different. Folks, abuse is a major problem. Let's not be a part of the problem, but a part of the solution. Let's pray and let's get come together, Lord, for that solution. The Lord says just bring it all unto him. Right now, for let's take a minute. If there are things going on in you that you can't find physical solution for these particular spiritual problems, emotional problems, we want to seek the Lord. So I want you to be able to also, if you have a chance, seek counseling. But I want to pray for you right now. I want to be able to come before the Lord and ask the Lord to search our heart, to heal us, to make a way, even when we think there isn't a way. God's faithful to his very word, folks. So let's bow our heads right now. Father, we thank you for your word, which you promised, Lord, will have its way in us. We pray for those that have been hurt, abused, who have experienced traumas, Lord. Lord, we just pray right now that you will make a way for us to get our healing, to bring our restoration, to bring that redemption which you offered to Jesus Christ when he was dying and buried and resurrected. Father, we thank you for that victory today. We accept Jesus as our Lord and we accept that healing right now in the name of Jesus. Teach us what it means and how to go about holding on to this this victory you have given us, Lord. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. And all the saints said, amen and amen. Folks, follow us right after this. We're going to have a discussion on this topic. Uh, you might have questions. We, we get to sort of discuss it. There were some things I left out just so we can actually discuss it in Q&A. If you have any prayer needs or requests, we have our prayer ministry that meets on Tuesday nights between uh, Eastern time at 6.30 to 8.00. And we'll have elders there that will pray for you and intercede on your behalf. So, you know, just reach us at livingword.nyc and, and follow up on what we have to offer. Amen. Remember, God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. God bless you and take care.